Watching Beyond Market, welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On the show today, we'll discuss the state of airport infrastructure in Africa. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther Ubodaga. Now, discussions around the state of airports in Africa have been on the front burner at various aviation conferences, but how much work needs to be done for the continent's airports to match up to global standards? Engineer Saleh Dunomo, MDC of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, and Ali Tunsi, Secretary General, Airport Council International Africa, join me in the studio to discuss the state of infrastructure in African airports. Thank you, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Engineer Saleh, let me start with you. This is something we discuss. It's always a, you know, a hot topic here in Nigeria, the state of aviation infrastructure in the country. But help us understand the state for Nigeria. Let's speak for, for Nigeria now. Help us understand the state of airport infrastructure in Nigeria as it is right now. Well, thank you very much, Asta. Um, the state of infrastructure in Nigeria has a great deficit. A deficit in the sense that uh, uh, the traffic uh, growth uh, is not being matched with uh, infrastructure development. So there's this gap that uh, we need clo to close in order to meet up with the requirements uh, of our infrastructure. So we need to invest uh, in uh, uh, all sorts of uh, airport infrastructure and equipment in order to meet up, meet up with the global standard. Some say sometimes that it's a matter of priority. I mean, when we talk aviation, when we talk, we're talking about people flying, we're talking safety. And, you know, you don't get a second chance when you're in the air if anything goes wrong. So people would naturally think that, you know, when it comes to budgeting for aviation infrastructure, it will get a huge chunk. I'm, I'm just thinking, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's supposed to be like that. But uh, unfortunately, of course, um, aviation cannot compete with other economic requirements, especially if you look at uh, security in Nigeria, if you look at uh, health, if you look at other sectors of the economy. So there is a need uh, for, for government to uh, create an environment uh, whereby uh, investors can come in and invest in uh, airport infrastructure. Uh, without that, uh, it will be very difficult for us uh, to compete favorably with other sectors of the economy. Okay, Ali, let me come to you. I mean, your experience, how would you describe the state of infrastructure uh, in Africa? In, uh, thank you. Yes, there, in fact, it's, um, it depends on uh, region and in countries. And also it depends on traffic. You should know that Amfraxar is very high cost, it's very expensive. And uh, when it comes to um, small airports, it's not balanced. So when you have one flight a day, you cannot recover your infrastructure. So you need a lot of fund from the government to maintain the airport and to operate. Otherwise, you will lose your traffic and uh, you, will, um, cannot, you cannot uh, continue operating. So that's why most of the airports in, in Africa is, are very small. And we can say that 90% are very small. Only very few airports are recovering um, uh, their investment on, uh, on infrastructure. Mainly uh, airports that have more than 1 million passengers per year. All the others are very small and cannot recover. And you should know that infrastructure is there, is a big investment. And if you, you cannot operate them, you can, there is no traffic, there is no money. So most of the airports are in deficit and they, they, didn't, they didn't recover. And this is the case in most of uh, African airports. For example, in Nigeria, we, had, we have one or two airports that can recover, but most of the other, um, we lose money because we should maintain them. We should have a, a person there. We should have... Uh, uh, maintenance, permanent maintenance, so, and uh, in the end, we lose money. So this is the situation. Engineer Salah, let me come to you now. Now, in 2017, ACAO and 54 African countries adopted the Declaration uh, Plan of Action for Aviation Infrastructure in Africa. Uh, and I knew that uh, the groundwork is still being laid to for, for the implementation, but tell us where we are right now with that. Uh, well, uh, the Honorable Minister of Aviation uh, brought together uh, all the stakeholders in the aviation industry in Nigeria first, and uh, uh, we charted a course uh, uh, for the roadmap for the development of uh, the aviation industry in Nigeria. Uh, there was a gap analysis that was done before this time, and um, this gap analysis uh, brought out all the issues that uh, government needs to look at. Uh, and the uh, government decided, okay, let's bring all the stakeholders together and discuss the way forward in terms of uh, closing these gaps. 
so the entire uh, uh, aviation experts that came uh, to Abuja uh, during that occasion discussed openly on these issues and uh, agreed on, on the way forward. Uh, of course, uh, things, things that, were uh, 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 that were identified included uh, we didn't have a strong uh, airline and uh, we need a national carrier. So uh, uh, we agreed that yes, we need a national carrier and something has to be done. So government is working towards that in creating an enabling environment for private investors to invest in uh, the creation, establishment of a, a national carrier. The second one is uh, we lack uh, uh, personnel. Uh, there's aging workforce in the industry, so we need uh, uh, personnel in that area. So uh, we have uh, agreed that to improve the aviation training college in Zaria uh, to make sure that they produce the required manpower for the industry. And we also identified that at the top level, management level, um, we lack research and development. Uh, so we need to produce high caliber manpower in the industry, not the technical cadre at this time around, which uh, the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology is producing, but we need uh, top level management and then research and uh, development. So there is a need to establish a university to handle that. Uh, we, are look, we are doing this uh, looking at not only the Nigerian market, but looking at the West African market and probably Africa at large. So these are some of the things that we need to put in place. Also, of course, the airport infrastructure, like I said earlier on, there's a gap. Uh, the government is trying to also create an enabling environment for invest investors to come in through concession in order to make sure that uh, the such gaps are, are closed. So in a nutshell, this is um, what uh, government has decided to do in order to develop the aviation industry by creating an enabling environment. Government doesn't have money to invest. But they are creating the private sector yes, is key. Now, yeah. Ali, as Secretary General of the Airports Council International Africa, would you say that some of those issues, uh, Engineer Saleh highlighted uh, press, um, skills gap. You talked about training, the need for personnel to be better trained and for, of course, to get younger people into the industry and, and some other myriad of challenges. Would you say that these are the same issues that you see across yeah. the continent? Yeah. In fact, um, Nigeria is um, an image of Africa. So with the same problem uh, held all over Africa, uh, except some, uh, some country, but we made a study um, last year about uh, what is needed for African development in air transport. And uh, the main gaps are infrastructure, uh, knowledge, training, and um, investment. So uh, if you look at the cost of runway, it's not uh, um, a small money. It's a lot of money. So. Uh, with that, government sometimes cannot support such investment. So we need more and more private sector to, to go in, to invest, as a package for the global development. It's not now the issue of only government. It's also a uh, private sector that should come, come in and invest, which is a very, very um, important sector to, for investment. You know that um, airports are the, 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 the door of countries. So more you invest, more you bring traffic, more you develop your, your, your country. Now, in your, in your experience, what, how do you think the private sector, I mean, what they feel, how they perceive those airports? I mean, obviously, there's, there's potential for investment, there's potential for money to be made if they do go in. But in your experience, what would you say has been the major impediment? Some, those en maybe entry barriers that stop, prevent the private sector from investing in airport aviation infrastructure? Yeah, in fact, uh, investment in, uh, in, uh, in airport is not only infrastructure, it's the model of uh, investment. Uh, it's a partnership, so firstly, it should be a partnership between uh, government and private sector, it's a PPP model. This is the, the first, but the second is um, to invest where. In fact, now we are going, as uh, I told you, uh, now for the new model of management how to increase um, income, how to, uh, to develop the business in airport. Uh, actually, the model of uh, managing airport is based on uh, aeronautical revenue, which is in Africa, it's bring about 70 to 80% of uh, the income. In the opposite, in Europe, in the United States, it's, the, um, uh, it's very low. So uh, in, in the United States and uh, in Europe, the aeronautical revenue is about 50% or 40%. But the other part is non-aeronautical revenue, which is 
outside the airport or uh, outside the, uh, the uh, aeronautical revenue. For example, the retail, um, aerotropolis, business around the airport. So we can invest in, in this new model of, uh, of management, not only in runway, so this is at the heart of the business, but all around, which is a new trend. So now we are uh, working with fun with other stakeholders okay. to uh, to change the model of managing airport the model of business which okay. is yeah now engineer Saleh, as you mentioned before nigeria is very key in this market because i mean in terms of, from a population perspective and ayata is actually quite you know particular when they put out their forecasts on um, where the growth of air passenger traffic in the next 10 20 years they always cite nigeria and say that out of all the Afri for african countries if there's one country that needs to scale up on its infrastructure uh, uh aviation infrastructure it's nigeria yeah. so is there that sense of urgency to, to to move faster yes this agreement has been reached and you i mean the areas have been identified like you said a few minutes ago but i need to know how fast we're moving with this to ensure that as we see the growth in passenger traffic we're able to match that with the right kind of infrastructure? Well, uh, we are moving very fast uh, uh, because we have recognized the need that, uh, yes, it has to be done quickly, as quickly as possible. What uh, uh, the Minister of Aviation and the Honorable Minister of Aviation has done is uh, they have uh, recruited a transaction advisor and the, the transaction advisor has already uh, submitted uh, a business case. Uh, an outline business case. We are expecting that uh, in the next uh, few days from now, uh, a full business case will be uh, submitted. And with the full business case, we can go to the market. Uh, we are ready to now invite, uh, with the full business case, we are ready to now go and invite the private sector to come and look at this business case. Uh, based on uh, what Ali has just mentioned, we have also looked at these models. The transaction advisor has done that, and uh, we just need uh, the to models that, that you believe you're convinced will yes, work because we will do that work. when yes. it comes to PPP models, especially in the aviation sector for Nigeria, it's been tricky in the past, and yeah. we've seen one or two deals go bad. So yeah. I'm just thinking this time around, what is different? Uh, the difference is that uh, the other ones that we did before this time didn't have all these uh, uh, considerations of having a transaction advisor, a team of consortium that will look at the entire thing, the market, the financials, the model, and what have you. So we must have a document at the end of the day, a full business case that is bankable, so that all uh, the people that are interested, all the stakeholders that are interested in okay. investing in this partnership will look at this document and say, well, this is it, and it, it has everything. Okay, gentlemen. Uh, uh, thank, you for your, thank you for your time so far. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back to pick up from where we left off. Uh, I've been speaking to Engineer Saleh Dunoma. He's the MD, CEO of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. And I've also been talking to Ali Dunsi, Secretary General, Airports Council International Africa. We're looking at the state of aviation infrastructure in Africa. Still with me are Engineer Saleh Dunoma, MD, CEO of Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and Ali Tunsi, Secretary General, Airport Council International Africa. We're continuing our focus on the state of aviation infrastructure in Africa. Gentlemen, thank you for your time so far. Okay. Let's talk about a single African air transport market uh, that's meant to create a single unified air transport market for Africa. I mean, it sounds exciting and I understand that a document uh, has been put together and it's actually in, in, in uh, effective already. It's been adopted by up to what, 30 African okay. countries so far. Let's. But the, the thing is, it's not the first time that Africa has made this attempt. I mean, decades ago, I mean, several decades ago, you know, several attempts have been made in the past to get everyone on board. And uh, some critics of the agreement say that, look, they're not confident that it's going to be different this time. But what gives you the confidence that this time it will be different? Ali, let me start with you. In fact, um, just to know what's the gap of the Yamasukuro decision, which get, which, uh, get 30 years to be implemented and never succeed to implement, implement it uh, in the whole Africa. Uh, the main gaps, it's, it's not balanced. In fact, uh, it um, benef gives good benefits for big uh, airlines and destroys small airlines. And that's why the main, the main uh, person who agreed in the assembly disagreed when they come back to their country because they have national carrier to protect. So the main gap is protectionism. So with the single market, it's more balanced and give uh, right to each one. And it's more open. It's uh, a big package. It's not only uh, airlines. It's the whole business uh, of the industry inside Africa. And that's why uh, more and more um, countries adopt it. 
No, but because part of the document says that the competition regulations, consumer protection rules, uh, institutional framework for dispute regulations for the entire market has actually been you know, put together and will address challenges. But has it been tested? Yes, uh, we can say uh, it's on because the first country who will uh, totally implement it and uh, uh, the pilot is Togo. So okay. Togo started as a pilot country and uh, we are waiting for um, the result. But it seems that it's on the way. And uh, looking at the number of uh, countries already signed it, it seems uh, that it's... You're more confident uh, this yes. time. Engineer yeah. Salah, let me let, let me let you weigh in on this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, here, there was, there was protests here from Nigeria because they, they, the, 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 the issue is domestic airlines are still struggling. Yeah. They complain about multiplicity of taxes, high fuel, aviation fuel, and then they say you want to open up the skies. How are we going to be competitive? Yeah, you see, the, the, the whole idea behind the, the agreement is uh, to, to unify the market and then give equal opportunity to everybody, every operator that uh, want to cross the borders. But unfortunately, uh, there is this fear uh, by airlines, especially our domestic airlines that are not uh, strong enough to reciprocate the other flights that are being conducted by international airlines. So they have the feeling that if you give uh, a lot of uh, 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 different locations for, uh, multi for the international airlines to fly into this country, uh, it means they will not have their, their uh, ability to pick domestic passengers will be reduced and they will have fewer and fewer passengers. And at the end of the day, they might even lose the passengers. And uh, they, they, of course, uh, that means extension for them. So they are afraid of that. Uh, but on the other hand, if you look at it, if you have a proper plan of growth and you are established and you are growing in accordance with uh, uh, your development plan as an, as an airline, there's the tendency that if you grow gradually, there's a tendency that you will enjoy this at the end of the day. Because you'll be free to fly to anywhere across the borders. You'll be free also to pick passengers when you get there. Now, but because uh, there are two things a country has to do. You have to look at the African economy as a single economy. That's why we're trying to do that. And also you have to look at the Nigerian economy or your country's economy to see how you can fit in. So in trying to fit in, of course, you have to protect your own. So that's why we, the, the, the crux of the matter is. So it's very difficult to resolve this too. But uh, with time and with the uh, people understanding more of what is in this uh, agreement that is signed and uh, proper planning in terms of uh, growth, in terms of route planning and so on and so forth, I think at the end of the day, uh, uh, the, the Amoksukro agreement is good for everybody at the end of the day. But for now, because of fear and other things, of course. Ali, what is your perspective? Because the, the domestic airlines, and I want to even speak for not just you know, the Nigerian domestic airlines, other African uh, country domestic airlines who also struggle on a daily basis, you know, day to day activities, they continue to struggle. So, I mean, they'll probably be asking, how does this document, this agreement, um, address our challenges. Uh, Engineer Saleh says, okay, look towards the sh uh, medium to long term. I mean, yes, the, the bigger picture is, is a lot, looks a lot better, but for today, yeah. they're concerned about how they're going to go from today to the next day and so yeah. forth. In, in fact, uh, there is no succeed without pain. So uh, to succeed, uh, we should lose some, some weak uh, airlines, so we, we should lose, but in the end, we should uh, succeed together, we should, have, we should win. So um, it's not only a Nigerian case. It's so you're saying that this should force a, a consolidation yes. in the industry, yes. mergers yeah. and maybe yes. acquisitions? Yeah, yeah. There will be, we will lose some uh, weak uh, airlines, but in the end, we will have strong airlines that can, like, like a national carrier, like uh, one or two that can uh, dominate the market, but all the other, because when we have 10 or 20 airlines, we will lose together. But we have, when we have two or three strong ones, and this is the, the, um, the, um, the regulation, or this is the case in most of the world. When uh, it comes to the United States in uh, early uh, 17, 70, uh, with the, the liberalization of air transport, we lose very big um, uh, company 
domestic company. But in the end, now we have two or three. Well, some might argue that we don't even have men. They're not even men in the first place. Yeah. So we'll have only maybe, f say, five, and you want to consolidate. You consolidate what? Two, one. But then there's a huge passenger traffic. Who, who in, in the end, the, 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 traffic, the, the passenger will win because the, there will be reduction of cost. There will be efficiency. There will be uh, on-time departure. Okay. And uh, so uh, in the end, it's all benefit for the passenger because now there is a lot, but it's not uh, very well managed. We have a lot of uh, delay. We have a lot of uh, non-regulated uh, um, airline. We have a uh, uh, blacklist uh, for some air airlines. Okay. So it's big, uh, a lot compli complicated. But when we, when we regulate them, when we uh, open the market, in the end, they will fight. And in the end, they will be uh, strong uh, airlines uh, uh, domestically or internationally that remain. So this is um, the life. So strong, remain, and weak, we'll look for other things. I, I suppose this agreement is here to stay then. If yeah. that, if that's, if that. well, let's talk about uh, airport safety. Uh, I, I, and I know that Nigeria, when it comes to airport safety, we do get you know, good marks, uh, high marks uh, in, that, uh, in that department. Uh, how, what, what would you say it's, it's, it has taken for Nigeria to achieve that? Well, it took a lot of time uh, for us to achieve that. But uh, one thing that is uh, uh, that I can say contributed greatly in, in our achievement uh, recently in safety is, of course, participation in certain specialized programs uh, uh, that were designed by ACI and uh, ICAO. Uh, there's this um, program called uh, Airport Excellence in Safety, um, which uh, uh, Nigeria uh, signed up to, and uh, uh, they, uh, there was a conduct of uh, uh, safety assessment uh, in two of our airports. Right now, about three airports have been assessed, but uh, we participated in uh, the first one was Lagos and uh, uh, Abuja, uh, after which, uh, of course, they submit a report and uh, will be given time uh, to make sure that we close these gaps uh, in safety. So after closing those gaps in safety, of course, safety will improve greatly in any airport that goes through this program. It's very, very comprehensive. So that helped us a lot. And uh, the CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority, was on top of us because they had that report. They also did their conduct and they supervised the closure of all the gaps that had to do with safety as uh, identified by uh, airport uh, safety uh, excellence. So once you go through that, of course, all the safety gaps will be closed. You must close them. And uh, after the closure, of course, uh, the airport was certified. Uh, we also, that we did that in conjunction with a program of certification of the airport, which uh, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority conducted in accordance with ICAO guidelines. Okay. So once you go through that, all your safety gaps, as far as the airport is concerned, will be closed. And you continue to sustain that because it's not just the closure, but you must sustain it also to make sure that all the items that you've closed continue to be closed. And if anything else opens up, you have to close it. And there's regular assessment. Yeah, there's a regular from assessment, ICAO, okay. yes, from, from the civil aviation okay. uh, organization. And of course, okay. ICAO regional office and ACI and even the airlines also, they'll come and look and audit you and say, look, uh, we need to look at this, what is happening, and you must make sure that you are on top of this. But that is done only after the uh, airport um, safety uh, excellence inspection and then after the certification by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. So in Nigeria for now, we have certified two airports and we are working on uh, the other international airports, three of them, Port Harcourt, uh, Kaduna and uh, um, Inugu. Uh, that they will follow suit and then we will go on to the domestic okay. airports. Ali, how would you describe airport safety in Africa at the moment? Yeah, in fact, just to say that uh, the average is not, um, is very low compared to the world. So we, have, we are two times in the other side of the world, in the bedside. So uh, that's why the, our objective, the main objective of ACI is to help airports to, um, to have more safety, to be more, more, more safe and more secure. So we create this uh, APEX program with airport excellence in safety, as uh, Mr. Saleh said. And we created it now for six years ago. It's kind of um, uh, sharing knowledge. It's, it's not a real audit, but it's a review, but it, the same way as an audit of ICAO. And uh, it's a volunteer program, so we bring experts from all over the world to go to an airport to help him. To, um, to look for his gaps and to tell him how to recover. 
So what, now, what, sorry to bother. What would you say is a common denominator? You said it's low, you know, on average. What would you say is that one theme that runs across all those countries that do not have that, that whose safety standards are not up to international standards? In fact, it's 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 Africa, and um, it's a big problem in Africa because safety is involving everything, involving investment, infrastructure, knowledge, everything. Okay. It's inside safety. There is everything. So it's because a lot of things that's just wrong. A lot of okay. things in the, in the meantime. So uh, when uh, there is a problem in, in, in the runway, it's a safety problem. Okay. When the, there is a problem in knowledge, in management, in uh, infrastructure, in equipment, everything together go, uh, gives uh, a safety problem. So it's not only one thing, it's okay. the global. So uh, when, uh, when we made this um, gap analysis in, in Africa uh, last year, we discovered that Safety is um, a very, very big problem in Africa. So, uh, and uh, also only 20, 25 uh, percent of African airports are already certified. So yeah. it's very, very low r rate uh, compared to the world. That's why, as I said, our main objective is to help our members th through this APEX program. Okay. And now we create a new program, which airport development, uh, African airport development, with the assistance of uh, Mr. Saleh as the president of ACI. And uh, the, um, the objective is all the, um, uh, the money we get from okay. ACI or from donation is to uh, help airports through training program, through uh, assistance program, just to help airports to be okay. more safe. All right. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. I wish we had more time. But thank you so much for your time and for coming on the program today. I've been speaking to Engineer Saleh Dunoma, MDC of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and Ali Tunsi, Secretary General Airport Council International Africa.